All right. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. <clears throat> this is a uh, super exciting webinar that will be pretty much 95% conversation. Uh, we are very fortunate to have Cindy Chikahisa joining us today. She's the VP of Store Operations at Sprouts Farmers Market. Uh, we will get into her uh, story and, and into conversation with her in a couple of minutes. Uh, particularly exciting because we actually uh, wanted to do this webinar with Cindy a couple months ago, and it was in the throes of never before seen operations for Sprouts amidst, uh, amidst surging demand in grocery stores with uh, with COVID-19, you know, across the country. And now demand is still obviously very high, uh, but Sprouts has been able to right the ship a little bit and they're in a much better place. And Cindy's been able to give us uh, an hour over time. So we're <laughs> very appreciative of that. Um, before we jump in, you know, just wanted to, to start with a little bit of a uh, of broad context as it relates to what we're talking about today. You know, most of you that come to our webinars are at least vaguely familiar with uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, you know, how it works, what it is. Uh, but for those of you who are not, we wanna just kind of set the stage a little bit. Even those of you who are, we wanna just reinforce and, and double down on a couple of things. So to start, I wanna go really big and broad, which we'll do with Cindy here in a second on, on her story. Uh, but first and foremost, um, you know, what, what is going on in the world right now that is putting uh, HR, L&D, you know, like operations, et cetera, front and center in, in the organization? Obviously, we're, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. Uh, everybody, for the most part, in the United States is working from home other than, you know, essential employees, which we'll get to in a second with, with Cindy. Um, you know, it, it really is learning's time to shine. Uh, the, the, the overnight fervor with which organizations have moved towards remote learning, remote collaboration, work from home, et cetera. Uh, it's been pretty impressive. You know, I've heard from multiple CHROs in the last couple of months. Uh, we had a three to five year vision uh, for remote work and work from home and all these other things. And that pretty much needed to happen in three to five days <laughs> way back in March. And here we are. And, uh, and that's the situation we're in. So uh, the, the HR organization is, is certainly well positioned uh, if not, you know, today, but certainly down the road to, to be among the heroes uh, within within corporations of all size to deliver learning, HR, et cetera, uh, effectively uh, and, and remotely. <laughs> Furthermore, um, you know, adaptability, communication, uh, you know, if, if you didn't have good soft skills before, they're probably not much better now that we're in a remote, remote work and, and Zoom and video call world, um, at least for the foreseeable future. So being flexible, being adaptable, being an effective communicator, being a great manager, being a great teammate. Um, these are all things that, that are that are top of mind for, for every company of all of all shapes and sizes. And then lastly, um, in addition to to work from home right now, you know, we're, we're likely this is likely uh, here to stay. We're, we're likely to see the idea of, of people being remote from hiring to training to doing the work. Um, that is going to be a consistent theme going forward. Um, and, and companies are going to have to figure out how to adjust. They're going to have to figure out how to deliver things remotely. They're going to have to figure out how to operate their businesses remotely. So, you know, we would be remiss if we didn't start really big and broad on, on, on this topic of how can virtual reality impact training and employee development if we did not start right here with, um, you know, with some of the themes that the world is seeing. Um, what, what is immersive learning specifically? Uh, you know, th this term didn't exist up until maybe a year ago <laughs> uh, at Striver. We are we are trying to define you know, what this industry is. <laughs> and it starts with one of the key words here. Um, we are defining immersive learning as an experiential training methodology that combines the sense of the sense of presence of virtual reality with advanced learning theory, data science and spatial design. Uh, bottom line. When, when people put on a virtual reality headset, uh, they are taken to another place mentally and they will act the same way in VR that they will in the real world, from the way they look around to the decisions they make to maybe even the things they say in some of these simulations. And you know, we feel that this is the training medium of the future. And Cindy's gonna talk a lot about the value that Sprouts has seen to date and how they're thinking about this over the long haul. Um, and then two more things before we jump in, <clears throat> you know, number one, we get a lot of questions from from customers, Cindy included. When we first started working with Sprouts, you know, well over a year ago, you know, what what sh how should we think about this? What are what are other companies doing? What are you seeing and hearing? Um, and and to that end, you know, we've really bro broken this down into like four simple buckets. 
Um, most companies are focusing on the following themes and then specifics below these themes. Um, you know, reducing the cost of, of incidences, you know, safety hazards, uh, all things related to, to a safer workplace environment. Um, operational efficiency, increasing the efficiency and productivity of what you do from new equipment in a store to how you communicate to, to how your business operates. Um, increasing customer service. Uh, how do we interact with customers? How can we be more empathetic? What do we do uh, as it relates to the customer experience? How do we deal with an unruly customer uh, and make sure that we're putting our best foot forward? And then lastly, uh, developing interpersonal skills. So, you know, soft skills is something that continues to come up uh, time and time again. Uh, it, it's definitely the fuzziest of, of the three things listed above, but we are seeing a lot of really successful um, executions. And Cindy will talk about uh, a lot of what Sprouts has done to start that really do focus on um, that soft skill, interpersonal skill, and, and, and customer service, um, th those two buckets. And then last but not least, you know, we'll reference this uh, again, kind of thematically as we, as we, as we move through our conversation with Cindy, um, you know, objectively, not, not arrogantly and not a shameless plug by any means, but, you know, Striver is uh, the only end to end immersive learning solution out there. And what do we mean by that? Uh, you know, on average, these seven steps are what it takes to pull this off from strategy and alignment to curriculum design, script writing, storyboarding, to actually, you know, getting your assets for your content, to building your experience, shipping out your headsets, roll out, train the trainer, change management, and then, you know, data, performance analysis. What were we hoping to see? What are we seeing? Um, how do we move forward? And Cindy will talk about some of that stuff with, with Sprout specifically. So we include this not only to, to reinforce our value proposition in this space, but really, whether you work with Striver or not, um, this is what you should be thinking about. And, and if you are, are working with a vendor or talking to a vendor that doesn't do everything on this slide, um, you, you probably should look somewhere else, at least for the next one to two years, uh, because being able to do the whole thing versus pieces of it uh, is absolutely critical as it relates to the success or failure um, of, of VR in, in your organization. So I'm done. Uh, Cindy is the star of the show going forward. Um, before we jump in with her, we are going to play a, a quick video that just summarizes and highlights uh, what Sprouts has, has done with virtual reality um, over the last uh, year. <clears throat> My first experience with virtual reality came with Striver and the Striver team. And I think it's going to be a huge win, a game changer for our team members. So we just had our first launch yesterday with 11 stores. And already today I'm getting texts and emails from the store managers. They're already excited. They're waiting for our team to deliver their equipment so they can get ready. And they think this is like really the wave of the future. It's going to help us a lot. All right. And we were uh, we were reminiscing before uh, the 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 kickoff to this call uh, a time in which no one was wearing PPE at Sprouts, which I'm sure Cindy will, will touch on. So, uh, Cindy, welcome. Thank you for joining me uh, and everybody else uh, that's watching this to to help inform them uh, how to think about uh, this going forward. Um, I'd like to start again, pretty big and broad. You know, with you specifically, would love to have our audience get to know you a little bit. Um, give us your your quick background on on how you got to Sprouts, and then, you know, more specifically, what what interested you in virtual reality as a learning solution? You know, you're very passionate about people. Why did you choose this one? Well, thanks for having having me, Derek. Um, I've got 38 years in the grocery industry. I've been at Sprouts since 2010 when we merged. Um, when I was formerly at Henry's, and about four years ago, uh, my manager, Dan Sanders, put me in charge of all the store training. And we started to develop programs. And the hard part was always having team members in 23 states and making sure that everybody was trained the same way. So we ran, you know, different programs. We ran, we had structures. We talked to people about how we wanted things to be done. But considering the geography, it was just really hard to get consistency and to get the same message. So Dan challenged me with finding a way with all of the, the latest developments in technology, finding a way to train people and 
have them all have the same great experience. And I don't know why, but almost simultaneously, Kate reached out to us. And then that was the beginning of, you know, our, our Sprouts and Striver partnership way back in uh, before February of last year. So yeah. here we are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. awesome. Um, I, I want to just take a, a quick detour. Uh, Dan specifically, you know, he's the COO of, of Sprouts. Um, you know, obviously executive sponsorship in selling in any sort of solution like this is super important. And we get a lot of questions on webinars and at conferences about that. Uh, so we'd love for you to touch on that a little bit. And then, you know, Dan specifically equally passionate about people. He's written a book on this, <laughs> a former fighter pilot. Uh, what, what drew Dan, you know, to this when you said, Hey, I think I got something for you. I mean, he was all in from day one. Talk to us about kind of what, what drew him to this as well. So Dan comes from a military background and like you said, he flew planes. Well, 25 years ago, he was already using some sort of virtual reality because that's how he learned how to fly a plane before he even took off. And so to sell this to him, uh, I always tease, tease Kate that it was probably the weirdest sales call they've ever done, her and Brian, because Dan was didn't have to be convinced. He was already sure that this was the right solution. He wanted to make, make sure that Strive was the right partner for us. It was easy to, to uh, start our friendship with Striver. And, um, you know, Dan's been a huge proponent the whole way. Anything that I've needed to um, get this launch off the ground, he's completely supported. He's a huge fan of that this is the way of the future to train um, our team members. And he knows that the younger generation, they catch on to this really quickly. And the majority of our team members, you know, a lot of them are right out of high school, right out of college, you know, 20 somethings. So for them to put this on, it's, they might even have one at home already. So it's been a really easy transition for the team too. Yeah. Two, two themes you brought up there that we continue to run across. Um, this is the future and, and you can't really speak the younger employees language if you're not doing something like this. So I think you hit the nail on the head. And then, um, you know, surprisingly or unsurprisingly that, uh, former, former fighter pilot, former military, that's a common denominator across a lot of our customers at the executive level, right? People that have been through that simulation based learning and training before, um, they, they tend to get it right away and, and they're all in from day one. So I'm, I'm glad that you, you flagged that. So anyone watching out there, if you have that in your organization as well, um, that's pr a pr usually a pretty easy sell. All right. So starting pretty broad and now kind of want to get a little more narrow. Um, first, before even talking about, you know, VR and kind of how you guys started and what you chose, um, just give us an idea of, of how it's going at Sprouts. I mean, we're, we're definitely in a crazy environment. Um, you've had an operational uh, operational roller coaster for the last few months. You know, just kind of bring us up to speed as an essential business. You know, what, what's going on out there right now? Well, when you were playing that video, I actually watched it a couple days ago before we, we were launching in Colorado. And in the video, I say something like cluster training is going to be something of the past. Well, this was months ago, right? months, probably close, close to eight months ago. And I think back to that and we were trying to, to get away from that because we wanted the consistency, but now we're forced. We cannot have cluster training. Our stores are all designed now to social, you know, for programs that socially distance, we've pulled back on any group kind of activities. Um, we don't even allow more than three people in a break room at a time or two people in an office. So um, the priorities at Sprouts today are team member safety, customer safety, um, making sure that all of our team members feel like it's a safe place to come to work. Uh, our leadership has done an awesome job making sure that our team members are taken care of, not only financially, but emotionally, um, they feel security. And um, when they're taken care of like that, then they take care of our customers. Everyone's in this this weird place right now. And, and I think if, if you think of our team as essential workers, which I'm so glad that they finally are thought of that way. I think they always have been, but I'm not sure anyone's ever said that out loud. 
um, we have to make sure that they want to come to work, that they feel good about coming to work, and then they feel they make the customers feel welcome and they make them feel safe. Cleaning, um, sanitation, social distancing, following all these protocols. We talk about it uh, three days a week formally with all the stores. And um, it's been, they've been, I'm so proud of the stores for what they've been able to do. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So now getting even more, more narrower, we'll, we'll kind of hone in on, on virtual reality as a medium and, and moving forward. We've got a new normal. You just mentioned it, right? Uh, uh, cluster trainings out, safety is paramount, consistency of training, et cetera. So, so how, how should organizations be thinking about how this fits in moving forward um, based on your guys' experience so far? And how are you thinking about it moving forward? So we're using Striver, um, the first modules that we created to help onboard new team members. So in the old days, uh, we would have people sit in a room. It would be team member led, so an experienced team member. They would do an orientation. It was four hours. They would go through our values, what we do at Sprouts, who we are, um, safety, you know, all that kind of stuff. And we, when we partnered with Striver, we said, okay, let's approach this. We want to do something that will reach a lot of team members. So for new hires, they watch these three modules that review our values. And what I feel good about is that those modules, when they're watching them, they're seeing Sprouts people talk about our values. They're hearing the exact same story that someone – that's going to get hired in another state is hearing. They're hearing this exact same story that someone two weeks is going to hear. So it's providing that consistency. The other thing is it allows our team members to go through this self-paced. So if I can only work Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, then I'm going to watch these on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then do another training on Saturday and Sunday. If I only work two days a I'm going to watch one one day, watch one another day, and then I'll finish it the following week. So depending on your schedule, you self-pace yourself through these. And um, without doing cluster trainings for team member health, this I'm so grateful that we launched this before COVID-19. I can't imagine trying to hire thousands of people, which we've done over the last couple of months, there's no way we could have given them a, a great onboarding experience. Yeah. Yeah. And, and your, um, I, I think something to underscore as it relates to the specifics of the content, um, you know, teaching the core values and, and some of these modules that your team members become the customer and, and experience those core values or not through the eyes of a customer. Um, and, and you guys saw, uh, uh, significant retention benefits uh, as a, earlier in the game when we were piloting this. Um, would love for you to talk about kind of how, how this has impacted uh, the employee onboarding experience thus far. So we were going to, we decided to pilot in our Arizona stores. We have 43 stores and we got the whole group together and explained to them what we were doing, showed them how to use all the equipment and I asked them, I said, hey, from every store, I need like 12 to 15 people to participate. So all of your new hires over the next eight weeks need to go through this. Well, it turned out that every store was so excited to get this done. They had not only their new hires completed, but they had all of their existing team members completed. So we had some stores who had 100% participation out of choice. I wasn't telling them to do it. Um, and what we did with all of those folks was all the new hires completed an assessment and they were asked questions about the And we compared that data to our existing markets in San Diego and Orange County, where new hires also went through orientation, the four hour traditional style, and they answered the same questions. And I think it was like 3% got the answers correct on the in the San Diego and Orange County markets and then on the 
VR side in Arizona, it was like 16 times um, the 3%. So close to 50% got all of the oh. answers correct. And the crazy thing was even when experienced team members in San Diego and Orange County, we had them answer the questions, they didn't score as high as the people in Arizona who had gone through the VR experience. So yeah. taking them myself and, and watching some of the other Striver modules, when you're in that headset, you're so immersed and you 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 feel like you're there. And I still remember watching some other the other sample modules. I still remember about specific items in those robberies. I mean, to this day, and that was months ago, I can remember what was going on, which is amazing. Yep, yep. Yeah, just uh, just want to really underscore this for everybody watching. Um, you know, Sprouts, uh, Sprouts chose an inherently fuzzy topic, <laughs> you know, core, re re recalling the core values and embodying, embodying the core values, right? And, and bottom line, uh, if, if you went through VR, uh, to, to train on this topic, you were 16 times more likely to actually know what you were doing. <laughs> uh, and, and this, Cindy, right, this was over, I think we had like 1,200 people. Your goal was 550, and you had like 1,200 people go through this. So this is definitely a statistically significant uh, <laughs> sample size for sure. Yeah. And the great thing was we didn't have to force anybody because as soon as they saw people doing it, they wanted to do it. And that was yeah. It didn't take me to sell it to anybody. They sold it to themselves. They all wanted to be in be in this headset. Yep, yep, yep. Awesome. Okay, so you, you mentioned earlier um, how how thankful you are that you had you know a, a bulk of your installations prior to COVID, as it's been a, a very valuable tool um, during during this crazy time and will be going forward. Um, you know, you've got another three hundred and fifty plus stores that we're actually in the midst of rolling out right now. Um, and, and we've some as recently as, as uh, just last week. Um, so would love for you to kind of take us on this journey. You know, number one, your pilot wasn't really a pilot. I mean, most companies pilot at like two locations, not 43. So, so talk to us about what initially made a 43 store and, you know, thousand person plus rollout successful and now today with this new normal, with, you know, not being in person and remote and, and some of the things we're doing together to combat that, how are we now addressing this going forward and, and what can people learn from? So we picked 43 stores just because that was all Arizona. We're all in Arizona, so it's going to be easy to keep an eye on. And I needed to get to that 550 mark fast because I wanted to roll it to them and then roll it out. So yeah. it was a short time frame. So to get there, we had to get the 50, 43 stores on board. Um, we did that. We got over 1,200, like you said. And we were in the midst of launching and to our other 300 plus stores, and then COVID hit us. So we had to put it on the back burner just for a little while because last week we started launching again. And what we're going to do is we're having webinars and we're having the equipment shipped to the store. They're supposed to get the equipment, unpack it, plug it in um, as best they can um, with the um, ethernet cord. And then we walk them through on the webinar and show them what everything does. Um, we have three folks that have been with on my team that have been doing this since the beginning. So they're very uh, well versed on how the equipment works. We take questions. Um, we have chat rooms, and then we follow up with them about a week later. So we're following up with Colorado right now to make sure everything's going okay. And we're going to do this for every section of the country. Uh, I think next week it's Texas we're going to roll out. Um, the, the one thing we do need to stress right now is it, it's a headset, so we make sure that people know how to clean and sanitize it. We make sure that people know um, – we figure if they clean it when they're done with it and then people clean it before they use it, it's getting a double clean. So we feel really good about that. But just the ability to provide this onboarding experience during this COVID-19 time where everything's locked down, where I'm so grateful that we're able to launch this to other areas during COVID-19 um, because before we know it and within a 
probably six weeks, we're going to have the entire company launched. And after that, we were, well, we were in the process of filming the second modules, but we've had to pull back just because, um, you know, restrictions in the stores right now. But when we get to that one, then we'll be able to film, get it out there. People will get another dose of some more immersive learning and, um, you know, really the sky's the limit on this one. We're going to keep going with different modules. We're super excited. Yep. yep. So per perfect segue. So we started with started with core values, um, customer service. You know, in a way. Um, what's next? So you know, uh, don't give away any secret sauce, of course. But I know you guys are thinking about a lot of different things. Um, even thinking about some stuff that Walmart's done around, you know, assessing employees and having this kind of be part of the new hiring package going forward. So give, give us an idea of, uh, you know, we kicked off with all these use cases on this slide. So how are you guys thinking about this in the future with some of the specific topics you'll address? So when we sat down and we thought about what are the topics going to be, we, we said, well, this is something we want as many team members as possible to be touched by. So the new hires for sure and the values, every team member is going to want to understand what our values are. So that was the easy one. The second one we're going to do is um, we're calling it naturally selling. So all of our team members in our stores, they need to understand the products, the attributes, um, if something's gluten-free, if something's vegan, if something's GMO free, all that kind of stuff. And so our next module that has already been scripted and we're ready to film as soon as we can, it's about selling. And again, it it's going to reach all the team members in every single one of our stores. So we're trying to use VR to as an avenue for something that all team members can experience. My My example always is we can't do a virtual reality module about cutting a ribeye steak because only our meat team members would want to see yeah. that. So we want to do something that reaches the, the largest audience possible. The other thing we're doing um, that's in the works is we're talking with the HR team because when we started to figure out what this was all about, we thought, well, let's put people in the situation that we're thinking about promoting and see how they're going to react. And we've talked with our friends at Walmart because they use this as well. And they said what they do is they they create three different answers, so to speak. And depending on what the team member responds, it tells them quite a few things like, is this team member better suited for this role? Is this team member, um, do they answer the, the good answer, the great answer, or the best answer? And what do each of those answers um, mean and how they're going to react with customers? So that's our next step is to kind of bring our HR team into this and say, hey, let's think about how we can use this for promotions within our stores or within our regional teams and really see how they're going to react in certain situations. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome and, and very exciting. Um, so I want to, uh, a few more here as we're winding down. Um, so far in this conversation, you, you are the VP of store operations. You don't even have training or HR in your title. We've mentioned the COO. We've mentioned the L&D team. We've mentioned IT. We've mentioned HR. <laughs> so so th this is a cross-functional effort um, and, and would love for you to talk about, you know, not only getting the cross-functional buy-in, but, but also operating cross-functionally to make this successful? Because um, I think that's something really important that, that the audience can learn from. So what what was funny, well, I was a little frustrated at the time, but now it's become funny, was when we were starting to talk about this, I had a bunch of skeptics in the room, right? The IT guys, the loss prevention people, the HR people. And then when we put the headsets on them and they experienced a sample module, they would take the headset off and they would say, okay, Cindy, I want a module about this and I want a module about that. And from all different departments yep. in our building, and I would just laugh. I'm like, I told you so, right? As soon as they experienced it, then I got their buy-in. Um, every department wants to be involved, even as far as our marketing department, because 
the what they what they realize it's the easiest way to to reach team members where they're going to want to be engaged where they want they're going to want to participate and reading a paper reading a pamphlet you know watching something on a video it's not always as enticing to our team members and i think this is this we found the way to reach our team members that they're going to stay engaged yeah 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 i uh, I, I remember one of our final meetings of last year um, when we were kind of just dotting the i's and crossing the t's on our expansion plan i think i, I had personally said to dan uh dan th th this is trust me this is uh more about setting you up for success for when everyone comes out of the woodwork in the organization and, and wants to do this <laughs> and uh that 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 happened uh just like we predicted so uh not only not only aligning cross-function with everybody but also learning how to defend and, and please everyone is certainly something that is uh that is uh, that is uh necessary as you roll this out so yeah cool okay um so two more for you uh number one um you know would love to talk a little about roi uh you, you obviously we you know we mentioned the the statistic you guys gathered about 16 times better if you to recall the core values if you go through vr versus if you don't um, you know, you guys have done a lot of math on, okay, we won't take this many flights, you know, we'll, we'll perform X better in this way. Um, our churn may go down by Y. Um, talk to us about, about how organizations should be thinking about ROI and how you guys have been thinking about it along the way and, and going forward as well. So what we did, we figured out all of these individuals in our stores that were conducting orientations, you know, what was their time worth? What was their travel time worth? What were they, what could they have been doing instead of holding orientations and then traveling for new team members? So it wasn't measurable, but asking a new team member, hey, you're gonna work at X store, but I need you to travel to Y store to do orientation. It just didn't give us, it wasn't a great presentation to a new team member. Um, so we thought about that. We thought about how hard it is to get new team members to understand what Sprouts is about, what our culture is about. And by having these experiences shown in the headset and having them immersed right there, they would see this is what Sprouts is about and learn very quickly kind of what their our expectation of them is as a new team member. Um, because they would see these examples in these modules. The other win that we thought could happen, we were hoping it would happen, was that when our store managers and our managers, you know, department managers, core managers, watched, put the headset in and watched these modules themselves, it kind of made them realize, wow, I'm not doing that, I need to do that. So it, it raised the bar because they saw these people in these modules doing exactly what we expect people to do. So that was kind of an, a reward that we weren't expecting. Um, and when you watch these modules, a lot of my team, uh, the team members in the store, they're like, what store do these people work at? I want to meet them. They're awesome. And I have to tell them, well, actually they're actors, but the stories <laughs> we did from real team members. Um, yeah. We reached out to team members across the country and said, hey, provide me with the best value story that you know, that you've experienced. And every scenario in these modules are written by our own team members. We've just put actors in their places. And it's really yeah. um, the selling naturally one. I can't wait to film it um, because I think that's going to help us even more. Um, making all the team members understand, hey, I'm a salesperson and I need to know this stuff. And it's okay to talk to our, t our customers about products and where things come from and, and where we source them. And um, I just, I, I'm waiting for COVID-19 to calm down so we can get the, the, the filming going again. Yeah, and we can do it without masks on, ideally. That'd be great, but who knows? Who knows when that day's coming? Um, okay, so awesome. So, so in, in closing, um, you know, we, we at Striver, we know there was obviously a lot of momentum um, pre-COVID uh, for, for virtual reality in the enterprise. Um, 
everybody in the whole world has just been on pause the last few months, other than maybe Zoom and toilet paper companies. <laughs> but but we are seeing now, um, you know, we we are personally seeing this insatiable uh, desire to, at a minimum, learn more about this technology. You know, at best, to actually move forward in earnest as a result of all the things you flagged about what Sprouts is experiencing and how you're thinking about this going forward. So. Hopefully, a lot of people that are watching this are folks that want to know what to do and, and how do I do this now? What, what's the next step? So if you had to give one piece of closing advice, maybe a couple of pieces of advice, but what would you like people to take away from this as it relates to go forth? And, and this is these are my parting words of wisdom. Uh, what, what can you offer for our, our audience? Well, first thing I'd say is... is um... Listen to Striver. We were given really good <laughs> advice. We have great partners, right? Um, Kate, Bree, uh, it, it's Kelsey. It's been awesome to work with these people because they have held our hands the whole way. And I'm not a technology person at all. I'm like the least technical person. So they've had to explain stuff to me how things are going to how things are going to work. And. Um, so I would say, number one, really listen to what they have to say. And then two, stay on track. Uh, it, it's going to seem like things go really fast and, and you needed to get this done, then you need to get that done. But stay on track because when when I was getting everything done from my side, Striver was reacting and staying on course. And we were able to actually parallel some processes and get them done, done at the same time, which Kate told me it's going to be really hard. I'm like, we can do this. We can, if you keep me on track, we'll stay on track together. And we were able to get a lot done in a short amount of time. Um, so those are my two, two, uh, awesome. I guess, words of advice. But yeah. I think, you know, Derek, I need to thank you and your team because it's been, it's been amazing what we could accomplish in such a short time. And if COVID-19 wasn't here, we'd be rolling out the second modules already, right? We'd be thinking about assessments, like really getting into it by now. We'd yep. be probably filming our next module already. Yep. So, you know, I, I with COVID-19, I'm, I'm gonna be patient though, cause it, it's worth the wait, we'll get it done, but I, I just want to say thank you. It's been a great yeah. partnership. Awesome, and and likewise, and for the for the viewers that uh, listen to Striver line was unscripted. I did not know she was going to say that. So thank <laughs> thank you, Cindy. Uh, listen, listen. But we agree. Listen, listen to the experts. Just like you know, we buy buy things from vendors too that we have no clue, you know, what we're doing, and we listen to them as well um, on our side. So um, thank you, Cindy. I, I really appreciate that. Um, for, for everyone, for context for everyone too, about, about just how quickly this moved under Cindy's guidance and, and leadership. I, I think Cindy, what was the first phone call was like February 12th, 2019, you know, you and Kate, and by May we had a contract signed and headset on faces September 1st. I mean, it was, it was fast. Um, and that is, that, that's not normal. So, so kudos to your team as well for, sticking to the plan that you laid out getting the approvals and, and like i said earlier that cross-functional buying it's been it's been awesome so really appreciate it well thank you um cindy thank, thank you for your time yeah thank you for your time today um you know i'm i'm obviously very appreciative as is the rest of our, our company uh, hopefully the viewers today um you know got got some nuggets to, as it relates to how to think about this how to sell it internally how to actually roll it out and do it and then how to think about it um, over the long haul. So thank you, Cindy, so much. Um, to conclude on our side, uh, a lot of what Cindy talked about today is on our website for free. Uh, I think all, all we ask of you is your email address. Uh, we, we are giving the playbook out to everybody um, from customers to potential customers to competitors to investors. Uh, we don't care. We want the tide to rise for everybody. Um, so please go to our website, download um, the Ultimate Guide to Immersive Learning. Uh, we've had a couple thousand downloads of this just over the last few months, and uh, we've been getting very positive feedback. So please jump in there and let us uh, give us your feedback. Let us know if, uh, how it worked for you and, and how we can make it better going forward. Um, with that, uh, thank you to Cindy. Thank you to everybody who joined us today. Um, please continue to, to stay positive, stay happy, stay healthy, um, stay sane. 
and uh, have a have a great rest of, of the day. Thanks, Cindy. Thanks, Derek.